uh, class, uh, we have been looking at the basics of transaction processing systems. Uh, what uh, we have done is to look at uh, the basic properties of transactions when they execute in the database system. We looked at the essential properties of transactions in database systems and we have been looking at the four properties that are uh, essential for programs, transactions. Atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability. Uh, atomicity property is uh, required to ensure that all the instructions in the transaction is either executed or none of them are executed. So, the property of atomicity ensures that all the instructions either get executed or none of them will be executed. Uh, the property of consistency ensures that when more than one transaction operates on the database, uh, the consistent state of the database is maintained. That is, they do not really malign the values written onto the database. The property of isolation provides that the effects of one transaction are not visible to the other transaction till it has committed all its values to the transaction. The property of durability ensures that once the, trans once the transaction has written its values on the database, uh, it will be stored permanently on the database. So, that is the property of durability. We have been looking at these four properties and trying to understand more on how the consistency property is realized in database systems. What we are going to do in today's class is to look at the foundations for the consistency management, which is also known as the concurrency control mechanisms in database systems. What we are going to look at it is the basic concepts of transactions from the view of concurrency control and this is what we call as foundations of uh, concurrency control. in databases. What I am going to do in today's class is show the basic properties of uh, basic foundations for concurrency control in databases by first introducing the notion of a schedule. What is a schedule and what are the different things that we can understand by the concept of a schedule. The second thing that we are going to look at as part of the schedule is we look at how exactly we can produce what are called serializable schedules. This is basically the basic notion of ensuring consistency in databases. So, we are going to use these two things. One, we are going to look at what is a schedule, what is the meaning of a schedule and how exactly serial, serializable schedules can be produced. After understanding these two things, what we are going to do is in the next class, we are going to see some protocols that are there in the database systems that ensure that uh, the schedules produced by the database are serializable schedules. So, we will look at the protocols in the next class, but in today's class, we will understand what we, are, what we mean by a schedule and what we mean by a serializable schedule. Now, let us go and understand the meaning of what we mean by schedule. Now, the meaning of a schedule in <coughs> database transaction system is, it is essentially a set of operations performed by the transactions on the database. We will consider a very simple schedule, let us say SA and then here what we will do is, we will write a series of operations performed by the database, by the transactions on the database. We are going to understand first the notion of what are these different operations before we write the actual schedule. What I am going to do is, I 
I will say essentially the database operations could be either a read operation which means that the read an item from the database read x shows that this is an operation trying to read a data item read an item x from the database. What this means is if this item is not in the main memory this item will be fetched from the disk and will be transferred into the main memory of the database. And after that this will be used as a program variable by the program to do some operations that means the value is available now it can uh, perform some computation using the variable. The other operation that the database transaction can do is what we see as a write x. Write x essentially means that write value of x back to database which means that the updated value of the transaction has to be now written onto the database. We will also have two extra operations which are performed either a commit or an abort at the end of the transaction execution. Commit means we are essentially committing all the things that you have done. This is at the end of the execution of the uh, operations a transaction can issue what is called a commit command. Commit actually means do all the changes okay. and then abort means essentially discard all the changes. Okay. So, typically the transaction decides at the end of the execution whether to store the values back onto the database or discard them. These are essentially the operations that we are interested when we are dealing with a database. Okay. A schedule essentially consists of read operations, write operations, a commit and an abort command. Now, what we will do is we will further define a schedule much more clearly by taking a set of transactions that are operating on the database simultaneously. For example, take the case where we have a railway reservation system where passengers are trying to book their ticket simultaneously. There could be one passenger who is trying to travel to Delhi by Rajdhani Express and he will try to book his ticket for that particular train. There could be another passenger simultaneously trying to book for the same train for going from Chennai to Delhi which actually means again both of them both these operations will be simultaneously operating on the database. Now, uh, both of them should get different seat numbers when these operate simultaneously. If both of them get the same seats we are actually leaving the database in an inconsistent state because two passengers cannot get the same berth uh, to travel from Chennai to Delhi. So, that is what exactly we mean by looking at uh, you know when transactions are operating simultaneously on the database how exactly we can produce consistent results on the database. Now, in this particular case what we can see is there could be the first transaction T1 which reads the current reservation uh, information from the database. We will just abbreviate this as read as an R symbol. So, and we will give a prefix R1 here to indicate this is being done by transaction 1. This is looking at the Rajadhani Express availability which is uh, given by R1x. Now, after actually checking this it will try to write the value back onto the database saying that it wants the reser reservation for this. In some cases the passenger finds that he does not have the money at this point of time he can discard the changes which means that the transaction can get into an abort state after reading the availability, but not booking the final one. It is possible for various reasons. The passenger did not have a lower berth as he desires. So, in all these cases the transaction after started could abort the operation of writing these values back on the system, which means that essentially uh, 
the passenger is not interested in booking the berth for himself after reading the values. Now, let us say this basically transaction commits at the end of it, which means that you have got the berth and you are writing this value back. This is what all the operations that could be performed by the transaction T1. Now, if you take basically another transaction T2, it could also be reading the value of this Rajadhani Express availability for a berth and then writing the value back and then later committing. Now, if you basically look at these are all the operations of the second transaction, it is possible that these two operations of the transaction can be interleaved in any order when they are executed on the database. What does that mean? It means that it is possible that I could execute R 1 x of T 1, then R 2 x of T 2, then W 1 of x and W 2 of x, then say I commit C 1 and C 2. This could be one possible execution sequence, because these can be interleaved in whatever fashion that is possible. This is basically what we mean by a schedule S A or some schedule. A schedule is nothing but a sequence of operations that we are performing on the database from transaction T 1 to T n some n transactions. Now, the transactions keep continuously executing on the database, which means that as the transactions are coming we are executing the read and write operations relating to these transactions and either committing or aborting the transactions at the end of what they perform and this process continues. Now, as it is happening we need to ensure that whatever operations are performed by the database is actually leaves the database in a consistent fashion. For example, we can look at the schedule that we have just produced and see what would have happened if the sequence of instructions are executed as shown in the schedule S, S A in this particular case. Now, as you can see here the value of x let us say at this point of time is basically 10 at the start of the execution. So, read x read 1 of x would have resulted in reading the value of x as 10 read 2 x will also result in reading the value of x as 10, then a write would actually resulted whatever computation that was done and writing the value. Let us say actually after this computation I actually is write a value of x equals to 5, I subtract 5 from 10 and let us say the w 2 actually adds 5 to 10 which means that it results in 15 and after that C 1 commits which means the value of x will be written as 5 when C 2 commits the value of x will be written as 15. Now, as you can see here if the transactions have been executed one after the other the end result would have been different x the end value of x would have been different from what was actually produced here. If you carefully notice the effect of the first transaction are last on the database because the second transaction also read the same value of x not produced by the first transaction and hence this will result in an inconsistent operation of writing the values onto the database. We will characterize this inconsistency more carefully by looking at a schedule and then trying to categorize the schedules in terms of how they basically whether they are consistent schedules or whether they produce what we see as consistent results on the database. Now, a simple case is where the transaction T 1 is written assuming that this is the only, only program that is operating on the database. Let us assume that T 2 is also written assuming that this is the only transaction that is executing on the database. This requires that T 1 is consistent as long as it is executed from start to finish consistent from start that is start to end 
all the instructions are executed without any other transaction seeing the values used by T1. Similarly, the same thing is true with actually T2 which actually means that it will also assume that the start to end is executed as far as T2 is concerned without being interrupted. What this means is either you execute T1 completely before T2 or you execute T2 before T1. This is a very important notion here of saying that I have what is called a serial schedule. A serial schedule is one where the transactions are executed in such a way that new transaction is executed only after finishing the earlier transaction. So, in this particular case uh, if you say a serial schedule all the transactions should be executed one after the other. For example, if I have n transactions there should be uh, a mechanism by which I categorize T i less than T j less than T n like this which actually produces a serial schedule. The only problem with the serial schedule is this is very limiting because it is possible that these transactions can be executed concurrently simultaneously still actually producing correct results. For example, let us assume that T 1 is booking for Rajadhani Express, Rajadhani Express and then let us say T 2 is trying to book the reservation for let us say Trivandrum Mail. Now, there is no conflict between these two which actually means that even when these two execute concurrently there is not going to be any problem in terms of the end results because they are not conflicting with each other. So, by unduly restraining that you know the transactions should be executing one after the other could only affect the database performance. We can when they are not conflicting suddenly we can execute them in a parallel way and get better performance from the database rather than enforcing a serial order. This is the first important concept of trying to look at a serial schedule. Now, what we will try to do is how exactly one can think of a serial schedule and produce a serial equivalent schedule not exactly serial schedule, but equivalent schedule to a serial schedule. Now, what we do is for this we will define the notion of equivalent schedules. What this means is two schedules can be seen to be equivalent under certain conditions. For example, let us take a schedule S A and a schedule S B and define what we mean by an equivalent schedule. Two schedules are equivalent if basically all the operations which appear in S A also appear in S B. For example, for transactions T 1 to T n all the operations will define all the operations appear in both schedules. Now, after this point to define equivalent schedule we need the property of saying what kind of equivalence is this between the two schedules. One is to say as I have actually shown in the last slide that when they are actually not conflicting it does not really matter how the operations actually appeared in the schedule S A and S B. For this what we define is what we call as conflict serializability which actually means that only when transactions are conflicting with each other those operations alone need to be taken care other operations need not be you know they can be executed in any possible order. What this actually means that you need to focus between the two schedules S A and S B on what we see is the conflicting operations 
and ensure these two conflicting operations are done in the same order in S A and S B. Now, for this I will define what it means uh, to say two operations in transactions conflict. Okay. Um, conflicting operations are the following. Now, one of the operations of uh, the transaction is basically a read operation. Let us say read 1 of x okay. and the other operation is essentially a write operation. Okay. This is conflicting because the transaction uh, T 1 and T 2 are operating on the same data item x and one of the operations is a write, in which case we say these two operations are conflicting with each other. Okay. Uh, there are also other probability where the first operation is a write and the second operation is also a write which essentially means that T 1 and T 2 again will be conflicting with each other with respect to this write operation. So, from this we can infer that if one of the operations is a write and two transactions are operating on the same data item in this case x and one of the operations is a write then we say that these operations are conflicting. Now, all the executions that a transaction does need to worry about how these conflicting operations are executed in a schedule. Okay. Now, to give this notion what we say is all that we will be worried about is conflict serializability. That means, you do not need to really concern yourself about serializing all the operations, but you have to actually do what is called the conflict serializability. That means, when operations are conflicting you have to do what is called the conflict serializability. Now, in this particular case let us say the two operations R 1 W as shown in the last uh, slide which means that R 1 X and W 2 X if they have uh, performed these operations one after the other it essentially means that T 1 has executed before T 2 as far data item x is concerned. Okay. Now, it could be the other way around also depends on how this is done in the schedule, how exactly this conflicting operation is performed. But suddenly if this R 1 x is performed before W 2 x this is the order as far as data item x is concerned. Now, if the uh, transactions are also conflicting on another data item let us say y and on y database has actually performed the operation such that w t w 2 y occurred before let us say w 1 y on the database item y if you actually want to order these transactions then it is going to be t 2 before t 1 as far as y is concerned. Okay. Now, if these two operations occur in this order in a schedule, it essentially means that there is no fixed order as far as T 1 and T 2 is concerned, because as far as x is concerned T 1 is before T 2, as far as y is concerned it is, it is the other way around T 2 is before T 1, which exactly means that I no longer can infer from this T 1 occurred before T 2 or T 2 occurred before T 1, which essentially means that on the conflicting operations there is no way to actually serialize the transactions by saying T 1 before T 2 or T 2 before T 1, in which case such an execution is not obeying conflict serializability, because the conflicting operations are not serializable in the schedule. Now, to actually give the notion how exactly this can be further looked at, two schedules S A and S B can be seen to be equivalent if the conflicting operations 
appear in the same order between these two schedules, which means let us say I have a schedule where there is a set of operations that are performed in this particular fashion on schedule A. If they actually are performed in the same order in SB, they could be some other operations interleaved, but then as long as the final order that I see between these two conflicting orders is the same, then I say these two are equivalent schedules. Now, this would not be equivalent if the order in which they appear here is different from each other. For example, if W x in the other schedule comes before R 1 x, then they are not equivalent schedules. If the operations are not conflicting, it does not really matter in what order they are appearing. For example, let us say there is a data item here in this schedule x on which actually transaction 1 reads this here and then there is another data item which the transaction 2 is actually writing which is z in this particular case. Now, these two are not conflicting operations. Now, if even if you change the order of these operations, it still does not matter because they are not conflicting operations, which is equivalent to saying that even if you now transfer W 2 to before to R 1 x, it still is ok for me because these operations are not conflicting and hence we do not really care to actually worry about the order of non-conflicting operations. Since in the first one R 1 x to just recap what we are trying to do here, two schedules S A and S B are equivalent as long as the conflicting operations appear in the same order between the two schedules. In that sense, the two schedules 1 and 2 as shown here, three cases where S A is uh, you know some random order where R 1 x appears before W 2 x. R 1 x indicates that this is a read of transaction 1 on x, this is a read a write of transaction 2 on x. Since these two are conflicting, the way in which in schedule A they are appearing is the read x is before the write x. If it appears in the same order in S B also, then we say they are equivalent schedules that all conflicting operations appear in the same order in the two schedules we say they are conflict equivalent conflict uh, in terms of equivalence they are con in terms of the conflicting operations they are equivalent schedules. Whereas, you can see if they are not conflicting it does not really matter in what order they appear. Now, to introduce the notion of how we use this conflict uh, equivalence in actually deciphering whether schedules are schedules can be used to decipher whether they produce consistent results, we say a serial schedule is always a consistent schedule. Okay, this is the benchmark to say that I produce serial schedule then it is consistent. The simple reason here is T 1 all operations of T 1 executed before all operations of T 2. I see this as consistent execution because I am able to execute all operations of T 1 before T 2 and hence the database is consistent, what it is doing is consistent. Okay. Now, when I have a, a schedule which is not equivalent to a serial schedule, I will try to change the operations which appear in the schedule S A. Okay. I transform now this to S A dash, but this is an equivalent schedule as long as the conflicting operations are same between S A and S A dash, this is still an equivalent schedule. This can further be transformed to S A double dash and finally, this S A double dash becomes a serial schedule, which actually means that I have been able to transform a schedule S A into a serial schedule. Now, we use this notion to say that S A is a serializable schedule, not serial schedule, but it is a serializable schedule. Okay. In terms of the conflicting operations, 
the way SA executed these conflicting operations is same as SA double dash A and hence SA is basically a serializable schedule. Now, what we are interested in is producing the serializable schedules because serializable schedules can be reduced by swapping the non conflicting operations in whatever way you want into a serial schedule. This is in effect conflict serializable schedules, conflict serializable schedules. What we are as long as a schedule is conflict serializable and you at the end of the execution you are able to show that this schedule is equivalent to a serial schedule. SA is a consistent schedule or the operation of SA is consistent and that is what you are interested as far as uh, serializability is concerned. This is a very important notion of actually being able to serialize uh, the transactions produce serializable schedules. Now, we will try to look at now is how exactly the notion of serializability will be used by database uh, transactions to produce consistent uh, schedules. Now, for that what I will show you is to start with um, as the database is operating okay, transactions will be coming in at any given point of time into the database. Imagine for example, this is a railway reservation system which means that the uh, passengers keep coming and keep reserving their tickets at any given point of time which means that there is this uh, set of schedules that is this set of transactions T1, T2, Tn which keep generated at different points of time. Now, as they keep arriving into the database some operations of T1, T2, Tn will be executed here which actually means that to just produce this we will say O1 x is an operation of uh, transaction 1, O i j is a general operation on a data item y on the database and this is how these uh, operations are executed as far as the database is concerned. This is what we actually mean by a schedule. Okay. Now, since the database will be operating continuously these transactions keep coming regularly into the database, uh, it is not possible at any given point of time to actually uh, close the transaction close the schedule and say I have actually looking at a particular schedule. What this requires is at a given point of time if you want to analyze you need to put a break point and say I will actually take what is called a projection of this for the complete schedule which means that all those transactions which have actually committed or aborted as far as the schedule is concerned whose operations are all performed that will be included in this complete schedule. Let us say up to T some R I have been able to now do the all the transaction execution then I will say I will execute from T 1 probably I will do a slightly um, change here and I say T R to just make sure that we get the thing right T R comes later which actually means that up to T 1 to T n these are completed transactions. That means the complete projection of schedule S will include up to T 1 to T n which means that my schedule S which is a, on a partial schedule of all the transactions coming in which includes the T R here this T R actually goes into the uh, this schedule here and then this from this actually I am actually projecting from this uh, set here to complete S yes. now which actually means that T 1 at a given point of time the T 1 to T R are the total set of transactions that I can consider, but T 1 to T n is a completed set and I am actually looking at complete schedule which means that all the operations of these transactions have been included in the complete schedule. Now, when you actually take the C of S as a projection, then we want to apply the notion of uh, whether this schedule produced is a correct schedule or not. 
this is when we are going to apply the equivalence this schedule let us say is called S A. Now, I apply on S A and then see whether this S A is reducible to some serial schedule. Okay. A simple check of seeing whether a serial schedule is being produced or not um, what we can see is a simple algorithm which constructs a graph showing how the transactions are executed in your system. Assume that actually T 1 came into the transaction system. Now, we try to actually see T 1 put it as a point in the graph. Now, let us say another transaction actually T 2 comes into the system. Now, assume that T 1 and T 2 actually conflict on a data item x and then uh, this conflicting operations on data item x are executed in such a way that T 1 appears the operation of T 1 appears before T 2 then provide an arc showing that there is a precedence relationship between T 1 and T 2 showing that T 1 comes before T 2 as far as this operation is concerned. Now, we assume that there is another transaction which came T 3 and this is conflicting on let us say an item z and this is the operation as far as this conflict is concerned. Let us assume now between T 3 and T 1 there is a relationship in terms of conflict on y and if in this case T 3 is executed before T 1 we have essentially a cycle in this graph which means that the conflicting operations actually in terms of the graph are forming a cycle. What is the meaning of this cycle? Assume now T 1 is less than T 2 as far as first arc is concerned, T 2 is less than T 3 as far as the second order second arc is concerned. As far as the third is concerned T 3 before T 1 which shows that it is not possible from this to actually say any particular order in which these three transactions have executed. The last one will be wrong because by a transitive relationship T 1 should have finished before T 3 and this is what exactly is done to show whether a schedule is a serial schedule or not. There should not be any cycle if there is a cycle it shows that it is a non serializable schedule. The presence of a cycle in the transaction graph is shown to produce non serializable schedule because a cycle prevents you from coming up with an order in which the transactions are put in a particular order of one being finished before the other and hence this will not produce a serial schedule. I think this is very important as far as the concept is concerned because we use the transaction graph to understand whether a protocol is basically produces serial schedule or not. As a later lecture towards the uh, next lecture what we are going to build is several protocols for actually building the uh, or executing the transactions. Essentially these protocols will try to construct the transaction graph in such a way that an incoming transaction is put in the correct order as far as the sequence is concerned. All that you want to do is you do not want a cycle in the graph, you are not trying to produce a cycle in the graph and uh, the protocol has to ensure that there is no cycle in this particular graph and that is what exactly we can understand. For example, imagine that there is currently a tr uh, the current transaction graph looks something like this. Let us say I have three transactions active in my database and this is the current sequence as far as the conflicting operations are concerned. Let us say a T 4 now comes into the okay, into the database at this point of time. I have several options of where I can put this to avoid a cycle from coming in into this particular graph. It is possible for me where the protocol always allows the transaction graph to grow only in the forward direction, which actually means that 
it is possible for me to keep this T4 here that is one possibility or I can put T4 here, I can put T4 here which actually means that the graph goes only in the forward direction and when it goes in the forward direction it prevents any cycle from occurring because you are not going to put a backward arc. As long as you do not put a backward arc, you let the transaction graph grow only in the forward direction. It is possible for you to avoid a cycle in the graph. The other possibility is it is possible for the protocol to decide to put it even before which actually means that if it can be made to read the value. Let us say there is a right x here and I let this transaction read the value of x before this is modified then it is possible for T4 to be put before T1 even when it is coming after the graph. In that sense it is possible that T4 before T1 also does not produce a cycle and hence this is also a correct schedule. So, it depends on how exactly the transaction graph can be allowed to grow by these protocols. Essentially the concept is a graph is constructed and a cycle is prevented from happening in the graph. So, I think we understood now the basic concept of how exactly the serializable schedules is used by the transaction uh, system. Now, what I am going to show in the next few minutes is to look at other kinds of consistency requirements. An interesting thing to understand as far as consistency is concerned is to look at basically T1 executing before T2 is a correct thing to happen, but this need not be the case. For example, if you look at debit and a credit transaction, it is possible that any number of debits and credits can be interleaved as long as the debit occurs as one unit and credit occurs as one unit. Now, this is very interesting because we can start looking at what is the operational semantics and try looking at whether the way the transactions execute is consistent or not. To give a more uh, deeper treatment of this, we will take a simple example and then see what exactly we mean by this uh, understanding the semantics and seeing whether the execution is right or wrong as far as the database uh, transaction execution is concerned. For example, imagine I am actually having an account and I do a debit on my transaction which actually means that this is basically withdrawal and uh, I actually add some uh, numbers after that means I credit into my account which is equivalent to saying that I read the value of x here and then I basically add some number here. As long as the read of x is consistent with respect to the right, it does produce consistent results. What this means is there is basically a write that is happening on x before the read is happening on x. Now, this write can be by any transaction, let us say this is by transaction i and this is by another transaction j. This is the relationship between the two transactions in terms of I am actually reading the value let us say the j is reading the value produced by i. That means, T i has actually produced the value of x which is being read by T j. Now, as long as this relationship is maintained between transactions in terms of how exactly they read the values of the previous transactions and this is actually maintained between the two schedules. We say that two schedules are equivalent in terms of use. Okay. This is called the as opposed to actually conflict serializability, this is called the view equivalence of schedules. Now, what this means is two schedules S A and S B are view equivalent as opposed to conflict operations equivalent schedules, they are actually view equivalent schedules. 
if the way actually the read operations and the write operations are related is they actually read between the two schedules the operations are actually the same in terms of the, the way it has been produced and read. Okay. Now, if this order is changed between the two schedules then it is basically not they are not view equivalent. The final writes between the two schedules also have to be this is first requirement. The second requirements is the final write operations are same between the two schedules are same in both schedules. These are the two conditions that needs to be satisfied for two schedules to be view equivalent. It is possible that view equivalence can also be seen as producing consistent results. For example, if you look at the typical case of of what we considered as the debit and credit transactions you know occurring simultaneously it is possible to see that view equivalence is uh, will produce correct results as opposed to the uh, conflict serializability. Now this is interesting because we will start realizing that it is possible to enforce correctness by understanding what is happening with the transaction uh, semantics. For example, it is possible to look at semantics of operations finally, we can look at a semantics of an operation and then see whether a particular execution of this operation can be correct. Okay. What I am going to do is I will take a very simple example to show how semantics can be applied for understanding the consistency criterion. Uh, it is possible to say that I have I will take a uh, slightly different example here to show what is semantics of an operation. We can take a simple Q as shown in this particular figure. Now, the Q will have what we say as a front pointer and a rear pointer and it will basically have two methods which can be executed which is basically an add and a delete. Now, if you can carefully look at uh, how exactly the Q can be left in a consistent condition when adds and deletes are happening simultaneously. Now, you can see that basically an add will, will happen at the rear end and a delete will happen at the front end. Now, if adds and deletes can suddenly be concurrent assuming that the Q is not full, the Q is not empty. Under those conditions adds and deletes can occur concurrently because add is actually trying to manipulate the rear pointer, delete is actually manipulating the front pointer. This is very uh, important to look at a little more deeper. For example, let us say there is a T 1 here and you are actually saying Q dot add. Okay. Now, there is a T 2 which is actually saying Q dot delete. Now, we know that from the semantics of add and delete T 1 and T 2 can happen concurrently and still produce correct results. This is basically semantics knowing the semantics of the operations I am able to say that these two produce consistent results. Now, if you basically further say that two adds can also happen simultaneously and I have a mechanism for producing you know two adds working simultaneously it is possible because all that you need is log the rare pointer and if you allow the rare pointer to be obtained by each add separately then you need to log only the rare pointer and ensure that these two adds at the add level can be concurrent but at the rare level they will be blocking each other. That means the access to rare will be made consistent, but at the add level they can still be working parallelly or concurrently. And this is basically understanding the operations of the transactions and applying what we call as semantic consistency. Since you know what is semantic actually means that uh, 
you know the meaning of the operation and apply the meaning of the operation to decide whether something is consistent or not. And that is uh, very interesting because it is possible to apply a much greater level of uh, consistency criterions by understanding the meaning of the operations. To just recap what we have done in this particular class and then give you some indicators of how exactly the uh, to go on further reading in this particular subject, I typically covered the idea of what is basically a schedule in this particular class. And what I have also done in this particular case is I have actually produced equivalent schedules and this equivalent schedules are from different aspects. Two schedules are shown to be equivalent from a conflict operation point of view by saying that if the conflicting operations are executed between the two schedules in a particular way, the same order is maintained between the schedules, we call that as conflict equivalence. We also showed view equivalence, which actually means that the uh, rights produced by one schedule, the rights and the reads, the way they occurred on, on operations are same between the two schedules, we call that as a view equivalent uh, schedules. Finally, we also showed what is called semantics and based on semantics, how the schedules can be seen to be equivalent. You can do the commutative operations as long as they are parallel whatever order they appear still the schedule is right as long as you commute the commutative operations are performed in any order you still uh, will be producing consistent schedules. And so, we actually shown how exactly we look, look at equivalence and what we have further shown in this particular class is typically how simple case of conflict serializability can be achieved by constructing a transaction graph. A transaction graph is constructed by producing before and after relationships on the various transactions and that is how actually the conflict serializability is achieved by constructing the transaction graph. Finally, we have actually shown how exactly the protocols, various protocols will be used will be designed to produce the serializable schedule. The criterion for this is will be designed to produce conflict serializability. What I am going to do is in the next class, I am going to discuss a series of protocols which actually produce conflict serializability. Okay. We are going to look at a set of protocols. We start with the most popular protocol of two phase locking and show how two phase locking will produce conflict serializability and also go on to show other kinds of protocols that exploit the property of the constructing the transaction graph without any cycle. That is the essential property is here there should not be any cycle as far as the transaction graph is concerned. And the protocols exploit this property of trying to construct the cycle and we essentially can uh, divide the protocols as being optimistic or pessimistic on how actually they construct this transaction graph. We are going to take this in the next class of looking at the protocols and seeing how different protocols can be constructed for producing serializable schedules. As a thing of further reading, on this you can typically look at there is a book of by Bernstein on actually concurrency control in databases. This is a excellent uh, Bernstein and others it is basically a a book on concurrency control and you can have a look at this uh, book as a further reference.
I have also used uh, uh, the basic foundation thing was used uh, uh, by the book on fundamentals of database systems by Elmasri and Nawati. Elmasri and Sham Nawati. I have used uh, the chapter from this book while uh, uh, doing this particular foundations on concurrency control. What I am going to also do as part of next lecture is while, do, while doing the protocols at the end of the next lecture I am going to introduce a few problems and try solving them at the end of the next lecture. Okay. We will stop here for this lecture.